night he finished very long ago I'm sure like me your level of anticipation grows I need to write more songs to improve my portfolio I never know when I might meet an impresario Let's have a solo It is Sunday the 10th of January. I'm very boomy in here because I've got the microphone turned up. How is everybody? Hello to Noaja, hello to Riako Music. It's not form yet. It's 22 days until February album writing month starts once again and we can all go crazy writing 14 songs in the 28 days that make up the month of February. Not long now. I hope you backed up your efforts from 2020 if you're already a participant in form because the site's been reset so it's all pristine and shiny and ready for people to start chucking loads of new songs on it in 22 days time so let's get rid of that good evening to array of emotions hello david i hope your back's holding up yeah so um the site's been reset, which means that all the songs from last year have been erased from the site. And uh, if we go over to the site, I have a little bit of news for you. So here's the credit screen for February Album Writing Month's website. Founder member Burr Settles does most of the general hackery along with Arch Run. Eric and Jen do all the paperwork and file hosting and merchandise type stuff and a damn fine job they do of it too. But the eagle eyed of you may have noticed that the list of moderators, in other words, the people who make sure that people advertising do it yourself garden sheds either post music or get erased from the site has grown a little bit because I got an email from Burr last week who said um, we really need more European moderators and are you up for it and I immediately said yes because I consider it a huge honour so I'm now a mod so I will be keeping an eagle eye out for nefarious deeds nasty goings on people posting messages like shit's weak dog and thereby hangs the tail from a few years ago and a whole bunch of other stuff a ray of emotion says doing all right good glad to hear it so yeah 22 days three weeks and a bit to go and um i'm already getting messages on me soundboard right let's if you're considering doing form let's let's investigate protocols shall we because they can be a bit confusing so everybody has a profile here's mine mine has extra buttons now because i'm a mod so i can suspend myself for larking about should i feel the need to do so at Atitlan 66 says hello site all cleared down rock hands incoming f form approaching rapidly indeed and i have to say thanks to you i went online after the show on thursday and discovered that the first two silver apples albums are available as a single cd for the princely sum of six pounds 25 
Sarah Copy is winging its way to me as we speak, and I'm very much looking forward to finding out what silver apples sound like. Riaka Music says, hey, Acidland 66, mod status achieved. So indeed, yes, I, I am a mod, but I will not be wearing a parka with a target painted on the back of it, nor will I suddenly be rushing out and purchasing a Lambretta scooter. And I'm still getting bloody irritated by this chat. I don't know if you can see how wonky this is, but um, I think I might have to bite the bullet and replace this chair because the gas cylinder in it has got to the point where if I sit on it, it just goes. So anyway, so right. That's enough of the squirrel. So let's get our squirrel caption out of the way. There it is. Squirrel basically reference to the Pixar film up. It just means Chris has got distracted already. It hasn't been going 10 minutes and he's gone completely off piste. But such is life. That's the way it goes here at HFO Towers. Anyway, back to form protocol. So when you leave a comment on somebody's song, it's no point replying to that comment underneath the comment as made on your songs page. The thing when you want to reply to somebody is that you go to their profile page and at the bottom of the page here, there is something called a soundboard. So you will hear lots of references to people's soundboards. And what it means is if you want to leave somebody a comment, that's the place where you go to it. And as you can see, quite a few of my friends have already left messages there and I will be leaving messages and have already left messages on a couple of people's website soundboards. And um, yeah, it's just a great way of building the community. And it's it's no good just joining form and putting your songs out there and expecting the world to come to your door because it won't work. You have to become a member of the community. And there are two main ways of doing that. The first is go to the forums on the form website and introduce yourself. There are, if you look here, regional forums in Europe and the UK. There's one person in there at the moment. So Bemi 1954 has already posted saying, oh no, we've got two. We've got Helen's Evil Twin and Bernie 1954. So we've got Helen's Evil Twin who's in Cambridge and Bernie 1954 who's in Catalonia but used to live in Wyndham. How about that? He says, does that count me in? That definitely counts you in. Uh, there are forums for basically wherever you live. Post one in there if you're joining form for the first time. Say hello, say where you are, and you may find there are other formers near you. Um, you may find there are... Mu well, no, you're not going to find there are musical events that are taking place near you, are you? Because Covid, which kind of sucks. The French Dogie says, hello and nice sweater. This... Um, yeah, it's a uh, Orlando Magic sweatshirt. I worked in Florida many, many, many years ago and moved there for the best part of a year and it got to January and they actually had frosts and I'd just gone out there with a bunch of Hawaiian shirts and T-shirts and jeans and stuff so it was like good grief it actually gets cold over here so I went to the local Target uh, just off uh, one of the I think it was probably just off the I-75 uh, and uh, had a look for the cheapest fleeces I could find and this was the cheapest fleece I could find and uh, it's done me rather proud for the best part of 20 years, which is not bad for a nine bucks fleece, really, is it? So there you go. Uh, hello to everybody. Defresh Dogie says, you should be happy. Orlando, our fourth in the Eastern Conference right now. Well, there you go. How about that? So uh, anyway, back to soundboards. Yes, forums. That's one way you can join the community. Become 
integrated into the community, become part of the cult. The other way is commenting on other people's songs. And that, quite frankly, is how you are going to get people to comment on your songs, is by sharing the love and commenting on other people's songs. Every couple of years, somebody posts on the forum and they've been on form for two weeks and have had maybe two or three comments. And it's always because they've sat there expecting the world to come to them, whereas they have to come to the world and make comments. Leave comments, be nice, be constructive, be positive. You know, just be a former and leave comments for other people's and they will come and they will listen to your stuff and they will tell you how good it is and how you could make it even better, which is kind of the whole point. So, um, yeah, sorry, I'm just disposing. Auto mod uh, occasionally kicks in for stuff that I'm sure I've approved before, but so it is. And as usually, it's it's Riaco music. He was using terms. But um, so Riaka Music says she's doing OK. Took a break from music because I needed to refresh my ears. So been cooking and cleaning. Indeed. And we have been sharing tips on how to make the best roast potatoes. And the ones I made this afternoon were particularly good. And I am full of pie and mushrooms and loads of vegetables and gravy. And it was lovely. So now you know what I've had for dinner and you know how to become part of the form community, then what else are we going to be talking about tonight? Well, we've got 22 days before form starts, so I hope you're ready. I hope you've been clearing your workspace of impediments to creativity as best you can. I know not everybody has gone as absolutely mad as I do with with this room, which is pretty much entirely given out to making music, as you can see now. And this is the result of 20 odd years in this house and 40 odd years in the music field of collecting stuff, most of which is secondhand, uh, and trying to make music, trying to get to the point where I can consider myself a musician. And I think over the last couple of years, I've got there. And the reason that I say that I've got there is entirely, uh, and I'm not bullshitting, it is entirely due to taking part in February Album Writing Month. February Album Writing Month pretty much changed my life. Uh, I didn't expect it to, but it really did. So, uh, right, Riako has now completely distracted me because she's, she's just posted that, Chris, you would die from the cinnamon rolls I made this morning. Extra gooey, like cinnamon crack... Riaco knows that my Achilles heel and one of the reasons why I loved working in Florida is that all the local shopping malls had branches of a fast food outlet called Cinnabon and they sell cinnamon rolls with the gooeyest icing sugar topping on them imaginable. And every mall in Florida that you walk into, I kid you not, you can track the location of the nearest Cinnabon purely from your sense of smell. It smells glorious. Now, yet last time I was talking about how to avail yourself of a free digital audio workstation. So I don't know if you remember, but I fired up and I'll do it again now because why not? So... I fired up Cakewalk, which for Macintosh users, I'm afraid it's only a Windows application, but it's 
it's um, a digital audio workstation that lets you record MIDI, it lets you record audio, it lets you use third party plugins called VSTs. VSTs are very important. You want you want to use a digital audio workstation that uses VSTs because VSTs come in many shapes and sizes and a lot of them are really good and a lot of them are free. So remember last Thursday I was talking about Native Instruments Complete Start Suite, which you can download. Doesn't come with a digital audio workstation, but it comes with loads and loads of specially good treats that you can drop in a digital audio workstation that handles VSTs. And I noticed when I was editing Thursday's show that I'd say, oh, yeah, yeah, it's fine. You know, you could just use Cakewalk without actually addressing those of you. And there are many of you who don't use PCs, but use some obscure piece of equipment called a Mac. So I went on a quest. There must be a Mac equivalent of a free cakewalk for Mac users. It turns out there is. It's called SoundBridge and it's a door. It's simple. It lets you use third party VSTs, which was an important factor on my list. And it even supports hand gestures in things like Microsoft Surface. So it's 64 bit, so it'll work with all the latest VST plugins. And um, it looks pretty darn good to me. So if you're a Mac user and you were grumpy after Thursday's show about there not being a free DAW for Macintosh users, well, there it is. It's called SoundBridge. The website is soundbridge.io and the links to all my videos, um, YouTube are just dicking about now. I tried putting the links for Thursday's show in the text description on Thursday's show when I uploaded it to YouTube and it kept stripping the carriage return feeds out of it. Array of Emotions makes a good point about Mac users because Macs actually come with a DAW. It's called GarageBand and it is actually surprisingly useful. I uh, I used to have a Mac Mini and I played about with GarageBand quite a lot. And it is, it, as Array of Emotions says, is that even a thing still? Oh yeah, it really is. But I just liked, SoundBridge looks a bit more like a, I he hesitate to use the term, but a proper door. Anyway, my website, which I mentioned last week, which if you go to my blog, it's headfirst.www.idnet.com forward slash blog htm. So every week I post and embed the latest YouTube video. And from now on, I'm going to be putting all my featured links underneath my embedded YouTube video on my blog site. And you remember I was talking about the Unicorder, the 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 um, piano that has one string per note rather than the three that a piano normally does. It's a real thing. It's actually made by a company called Clavins. And they do it in 64 key and full on 88 key flavors. There's a picture of one. It's actually the picture of of the same piano that appears in the contact instrument for Unicorder that uh, Native Instruments put together. I uh, I was quite taken with this, but then I saw the prices because the 88 key Unicorder goes for just under 24,000 euros which is a little bit out of my price range. Let's let's say that at the moment. And anyway, I've got a sampled one. I'm going to use that. So I've been steadfastly amassing 
great numbers of links so you remember the cryptar that i talked about on thursday's show just go to my website find the blog entry for friday and then click on cryptar and there you go there's your free vst contact instrument which has all sorts of well as as the guy says kind of a guitar slash piano slash stringy character with omnipresent sound defects and eternal candle flames for endless night shift recording sessions and he's not wrong it is glorious i've been having great fun with it Riaco music says i started with garage band it did the job well there you go that's shining recommendation that is one point actually that i haven't haven't thought to mention before because there is a version of ableton ableton is my daw of choice i've been using it for over a decade now but i came to use ableton because i bought a piece of music hardware that came with a cd for ableton live light De French Dogie says, I tried to sign up on Formorg today, but can't. Some recapture error. Ah, that has, that has cropped up in the past. Let me do some digging after the show and I'll see if I can find, um, uh, of course, the forum's been wiped. So the forum may no longer have the piece of information that I will be looking for, but I'm pretty sure Burr has talked about this happening on the site before. So there is a way around it. It may even just be switching browsers or clearing your browser cache will do it. That seems to work for a lot of the problems on the, the form website. But um, let me let me dig into that and I will I will see what I can find out. Yeah, so when I when I got this piece of hardware, it came with a CD which had a li li Ableton Live light. Now, you need a serial number for it. You can't just download it from Ableton well you can download it from Ableton's website but you will need a serial number or a CD sleeve that's got a serial number printed on it in order to use it but it doesn't do everything that the full version of Ableton does but when I installed it and started playing with it it certainly did enough for me to decide there and then that, yes, that was how I wanted to make music. I just love Ableton's design philosophy. I love the way they put stuff together. And yeah, what's not to like? I've been, I've been using the software, as I say now, for 11 or 12 years now. Web development in a nutshell, that clear your browser cache says array of emotions and uh, he should know i am so seriously into the ableton infrastructure that i have a dedicated controller called the push and the push basically allows you to perform and play and manipulate and mix your sessions or your recordings in Ableton. It's a really, really powerful controller. You can pick up a limited functionality version of Ableton if you buy the right gear. And I think basically if you buy anything from Novation and anything from Scala, it should come, or Focusrite, it should come with a copy of Ableton Live Lite. But to be honest, I'd recommend getting the full version because it really is rather, rather splendid. To that end, let me play you one of the tracks that I played you an earlier version of it on Thursday. But as you can see, I've been rather busy. Oh, um, I'm not going to play four pieces of music for you. I'm not going to inflict that on you tonight. 
but uh, the first track on the album, I did go back and completely re-recorded all the guitars and, in fact, then recorded another guitar track for good measure. So that track now has three tracks of completely fresh guitars on it, and it sounds rather good. But, um, yeah, Una Corda is the, the green line here. So if I open up Complete Control, it should even show you a picture of it. There it is. So there's the weird, funky one-string piano, one string per note rather than one string in its entirety. Um, the Unicorder has various wheels and manipulative things where you can basically drop felt in between the keys or other materials between the keys to give it a really interesting timbre but uh, I've just left it with felt and ramped up the harmonic echoes the overtones on the strings quite a lot uh, I used stilt which is a spectral phase equalizer spectral linear phase equalizer so it basically changes where the distribution of the frequencies are in an audio signal and it pushes some louder and other ones it's kind of like a fancy multi-band eq but yeah it it's i like it because it makes the unicorder sound rather spiffy and yeah there's a lot more in this than there was so i'm just gonna shut up and play it so this is boltzmann brains Yeah. 
I rather like that, don't you? I, um, I just seem to have found um, a sort of genre that I'm really having fun with. And just listening to that now, it's just, oh, that's me, that is. So very pleased with that. Sorry to hear we have just lost Atitlan66, uh, who will catch up on the YouTube version of this. For those of you joining us, hello, Rabem Ziv. Um, no problems here. Good. Glad to hear it. That was a piece of music that I'm putting together about an album a month at the moment. And... I put them out on headfirstonly.bandcamp.com as pay what you want because I'm kind of doing them to teach myself various aspects of the new software that I've acquired since I gave the studio a complete refit about six weeks ago. And believe me, this place looked very different back in October. Since then, I have brought a proper bespoke wooden studio desk which is glorious and uh, I now have a, a pull out MIDI controller. The MIDI controller came with about 180 gigabytes of software and that's where I sort of went oh what do I do now? So I've set myself the task of rather than trying to use it all and getting completely hopelessly confused of just picking one or two things out of that 180 gigabytes of complete 13 made by native instruments because the native instruments keyboard i've here is is all part of the same ecosystem and this month it's the turn of the pianos the French Doggy says i really like the song it reminds me of the theme in grand theft auto 5 i should dm it to you on Twitter once I've found the exact theme. There's some great music in Grand Theft Auto. I've got Grand Theft Auto 4. I was most amused when I realised that one of the disc jockeys on the car radio was Will Wheaton. So, yeah, that was... Uh, what was I... Oh, I was explaining... Yeah, so there's there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. And this is the result of 40 years of acquiring stuff. Right. That was Boltzmann Brains. So the theme the theme of this month's free album is basically to do with long periods of time and the probability over ridiculously long pieces of time that probability of anything happen will happen if you have enough time doesn't matter how improbable that something is if it's not infinitely improbable douglas adams reference there yeah he knew what he was talking about if something is not infinitely improbable and you throw ridiculous amounts of time at it and by ridiculous amounts of time i'm talking billions and billions of eons then it'll happen. And the idea of that as a thought experiment, or Gedanken experiment in German, which was where the uh, the guy originally came up with it, was a German scientist called Boltzmann. And he said, well, you know, in that case, you could have a brain, a human brain popping into existence in the universe. It probably wouldn't be thinking very much for very long because it would be surrounded by the dense vacuum of space. Dense vacuum? Can you have a dense vacuum? Who knows? But, um, yeah, so this track, which is the uh, third track, on the album again i played you like a version of it on thursday's show but i've been busy and there's a lot more on it now and once again i've conscripted all my um, hardware synths in this so all the red and orange tracks in here are various aspects of real physical synthesizers but um the french dogie was admiring the lead tone on that last track and that's part of arturia's v collection 
which is a series of emulations of classic synthesizers like that and the synthesizer i was used i i couldn't find the right lead tone until i find that one was an emulation of a mini moog uh, classic monophonic synthesizer from the early 1970s as used by amongst others keith emerson rick wakeman and all my prog rock heroes this track so we had the una corda last time the piano see the the fluorescent green track in this basically on all of these mixes is the foundation of the track and in each case it's a piano and in this particular instance it's a complete uh sorry a contact instrument called the grandeur so it's a sampled concert grand piano and as with the other track i'm all about the layering the french doggy says dm sent with a timestamp brilliant thank you i shall listen i um i start with a piano and then get very very carried away by layering a lot of synthesizers and just how many synthesizers well let me play you this one and you can see
So that was Gedanken Experiment. So that's track number three from Spontaneous Grand Pianos. So yeah, if you wait for an almost infinitely long period of time, you may encounter a spontaneous grand piano popping fully formed out of the vacuum of the quantum sea. And that's kind of what this album is blathering on about in its own completely non-textual and otherwise literarily deprived way. So Riako was asking, do you tend to stick reverb on your orchestral instruments? I, this whole album has quite a heavily reverbed feel to it. The piano and it, so the effectively this this control here on each track is the a send so rather than having loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of different instances of reverb on every track and using loads of processing power what you do in a door to save processing power is use what are called sends and what that means is literally what it says there are two sends on most doors an a and a b and you can choose to send the completed audio from any track in your daw to that send track and that send track so on mine i always have a reverb on a which is valhalla's supermassive because i love it to bits and valhalla dsp make supermassive available to you for free the other send that i use is is a dark fade stock ableton echo so uh, there you go and that saves me a lot of processing power although i have to say that over the last week the number of times that Ableton has crashed on me is really beginning to grate somewhat. The French Dogie says, what did you use to give this kind of out of tune effect unless my headphones work weird? I think there, no, there, there is, there is a Mondo mod. There it is, dropped on a few tracks, which is... Uh, a waves plugin and it is a completely over the top chorus so so that's kind of what is probably causing the out of tune effect it is way it's it's a very very heavy chorus so yeah that's if i just pop that back keyboard shortcuts i it's taken me 10 years to use them but i am now very very heavily involved in using keyboard shortcuts and h in ableton compresses all the tracks that you've got visible so that they all fit in your view which is really really helpful yeah so that's gedanken experiment uh i have one more track to play for you tonight which is one that actually i put together this afternoon so again another piano you remember on thursday's show i talked about the ivy audio free contact instrument which is a sampled steinway model b and uh, with a bit of reverb on it it sounds glorious so this is this is the ivy studios piano in 162 Supermassive, supermassive reverb. Oh, 
nothing to bits. So there's not a lot on this track at the moment, and I'm beginning to think maybe, you know, I ought to try weaning myself off the temptation of just dropping all the synthesizers onto a track. So there's just a few little bits of embellishment with a bunch of synths on here. Uh, there is Hybrid Keys, which is another free instrument that if you download Complete Start from Native Instruments, that's one of the instruments that you get. It's kind of a nice bell type patch. Again, drowned in reverb. What else have we got? We've got one of my favourites, Arturia's emulation of the massive Yamaha CS80 synth. Van Gallis had eight of these. Toto used to tour with two of these in their stage rig. They weigh over 200 kilograms. They are not portable. You have to be mad to go out on the road with one of these. But Toto went out on the road with two. This, of course, is just all about the brass because I'm all about the brass. And actually, some of the reverb in this one is being done by the CS80 emulation, not just by Supermassive. And then finally, what have we got on the end? I think I've just got some strings. Yeah. So Spitfire Audio's Intimate Strings, which is a 29 euro job that you can avail yourself of from Spitfire Audio. Uh, if you've not had a look at the Spitfire Audio site, go and have a look. They've got some amazing stuff. They have a free series of plugins that go under the name of Labs, L-A-B-S. And you can have great fun with those. But the main focus of this, other than the piano, is just me on my um, ni my nine-string guitar. Riaco Music spotted the reference. Good. Yep. Glad. Glad you spotted it. Um, yeah, it's me on my nine-string guitar, which I bought to play sort of genty heavy metal music, but I've been ending up using it because it's a damn good bass guitar. So this track is the fourth track on the album, and this track is called... Where's it gone? There it is. This track is called Deep, Deep Time. Time.
So I've stopped playback and you can hear it's just carrying on enjoying itself and it will probably carry on enjoying itself for about another minute or so. But that was deep time. So that is track number four from Spontaneous Grand Piano. So what are we, third of the way through the month? Yeah, 12 tracks in a month. I'm looking to be pretty much on target. Um... I've left lots of empty tracks, as you can see there, for additional synth layers. I'm listening to it at the moment. It it definitely needs something. The I, I don't know if you noticed, but I hastily tamed down the piano dynamics for the second half because I was getting a little bit carried away by the fact that the dynamics with the the keyboard on the S88 is is just so responsive and you really get the feel that you're playing a real instrument rather than something that is converting what I'm doing down here into digital information sending it to my computer over there which is then turning that digital information into the sound of a grand piano and uh, yeah so i was laying it on a bit thick but this is one of the reasons why rather than i mean the the core m3 behind me here has dozens of really really excellent grand piano patches on it but when you've played it that's kind of it whereas with a contact instrument I can go into what I've done so there's all the MIDI information from what I played and at the bottom here there's the velocity information which is how hard I hit the keys and if you have a look at the first half MIDI information it gets quite close to the top of the 128 point scale at the end so that particular note so the reason that it was and you can hear the reason why I, I, I hit the key so hard is because over a certain volume level the supermassive reverb goes oh right you like that I'm gonna just use that and run with it and it just goes on and on and tails off and um, I rather like that when I just played the whole thing as a piano performance but it's kind of a little bit too over the top listening it listening to it now with you guys so yeah i think i will tame in fact let's do it now i'm not going to tame it as much as i did for the 
second half, the, the final piece of the music. But those notes there, and I love this, I can literally lasso all the notes that are a bit on the loud side. And then I can just gradually tame them down a bit. And they probably don't need taming any more than that. So what does that sound like now? to save stuff and um, with the the rate at which Ableton has been crashing recently I think saving your stuff whatever DAW you're using whatever platform you're using whether you're using Windows or a Mac or Linux or something else always save your work kids regularly otherwise you may regret it although Ableton is very good at being able to recover stuff when uh, Ableton unexpectedly crashed during your last session, would you like to recover your work? Is a question I have been asked many times, even over the course of today. So, anyway, that's life. Has, has life been crashing a lot? Yes. Uh, I was. At one point, I don't know what I'd done, but I had one live set and it kept crashing and I kept opening it up and I kept trying to drop a Waves plug-in onto one of the MIDI tracks and every time I did so life would crash so I eventually thought mm, something's telling me that I shouldn't be using that live plug-in and it worked fine otherwise so hey ho um, I have been emailing my crash reports over to Ableton on a regular basis. So, uh, And Live 11 comes out in the immediate future, probably within the next month or so. And I have already got my copy on order, so as soon as it comes, I will be downloading it. And I'm rather hoping that it happens before February Album Writing Month starts off. Um, because that will be fun, learning a new version of live while I'm trying to write 14 songs in 28 days. Yes, we're back to February album writing month again. So one final bit of trivia law protocol in February album writing month is that if you are doing February album writing month for the first time you are referred to as a formling. Isn't that rather nice? All right, it has shades of the younglings that was one of the most wince-inducing parts of the Star Wars prequels series, but um, you can't have everything. So, yes, you are a youngling. One other bit of protocol. A song that is on the February Album Writing Month website that no one has commented on is known as a zero comment song which has become shortened over the years to zong and in fact if you go onto the february album writing month website when there are songs available i mean we can go now but there aren't any songs available so i don't know why i'm doing this because i can't actually show you what i'm talking about but nevertheless i'm going to do it because i've started so i'm going to finish so there are if we go to 
Well, I can't even do I can show you one one of the things I referred to. So there you go. This is a list of participants. So there are 579 participants who have an account on February Album Writing Month this year. And there you go. There's a little option in the form menu that you click on. It will show you formlings, first year formers. So there are 231 first year formers this year. And it's rather nice to see that quite a few of them have put their photographs because if you don't put your photograph on, cool as he is, um, Ludwig, Ludwig Van does tend to get rather overused a lot. So upload a picture, upload your band's logo, upload your album cover. But um, yeah, do something other than Ludwig Van here. Yeah? So, yes, there will eventually be a, another menu item at the top on this black bar at the top of the page, which will say songs, uh, songs rather. And if you click on songs, you will see songs by all formers, people on your watch list, because if you like particular formers and you want to keep up to date with what they're doing, you can add them to your watch list. How do you do that? Well, if we go to a former... You see there's a little button there that says watch and what that does is it will notify you and you will also get a separate category of songs in your feed that you can comment on, which is songs from people in your watch list. So it's a great way if you've got favourite artists, add them to your watch lists uh, because A, it gives the artist feedback that somebody cares enough about their material that they want to know when there's more of it. Uh, but it's also a really useful way of keeping up to date with, with your friends. So watch listing, watch listing and formlings and zongs. There you go. That's three additional pieces of arcane trivia and lore from the February Album Writing Month website that you need to know before taking part. And now you do, so you can take part. So go off after the show and sign up. But um, with that, that's kind of it for this evening. Uh, I don't know if my voice is giving out or I'm just generally knackered, but uh, I'm getting a bit croaky this evening. So I think it's a sign that I should knock things on the head for the for the evening. I'm not doing too great at the moment frankly uh i'm having a lot of trouble sleeping and i'm in quite a lot of discomfort for various medical reasons that are readily explained on my blog and on my form profile Riako music says i think you're just knackered and she's not wrong i am pretty much uh no gas in the tank I won't be going anywhere this week, not even to go shopping. I went shopping on Friday and it's like that was enough to see me off for the rest of the week. But it's the way it goes. It is what it is and we just have to deal with it. So at least I can sit in here and be in my happy place and make music and share it with you guys. And... That is what I will be doing this week. So I hope you will be able to join me once again. I hope at it land that your streaming, buffering, internet connectivity problems are resolved and you can actually join in in the chat rather than having to just watch the archive because uh, you are missed. Um, it's always nice to have uh, another fellow synth nerd don't tell anybody but I might have bought the collection 8 but until Thursday when I will be back making more music blathering on getting completely sidetracked once again I will wish you a pleasant evening I hope however much the world sucks that it sucks a little less over the coming week and that you have positive news and that things 
start looking up, basically, because it can't be this rubbish forever, can it? Really? So, wherever you are, wear a damn mask. But stay well, stay safe, stay sane. And I will see you back here, same time, same bat time, same bat channel. Well, actually, it'll be Thursday. It'll be 19.30 British, uh, British summertime. That's wishful thinking, isn't it? 19.30 Greenwich Mean Time or Coordinated Universal Time. 2030 central european time and other time scales are available but until then take care and uh, look after yourselves